Ranged Hunter is incredibly strong right now and incredibly fun to play, but the only issue is it can be a little bit complex, and with the recent changes, it does have a little bit of changes in our rotation to be able to min-max the spec. So this video will be your ultimate guide to Ranged Hunter in Phase 3 of Season of Discovery. And of course, I'll go through everything you need to know about the spec, but if you want to win some free giveaways, including potentially some free money, stay till the end of the video because now that we've hit 100,000 subscribers and thank you guys so much for that we will be doing giveaways on all of the next few videos maybe even for the whole next month first let's go through the rune changes that just happened this week that made range hunters so much more powerful one of the rune changes that happened was rapid killing now makes your rapid fire cooldown go down to one minute this is not actually useful for you so don't worry about it and they also buffed steady shot so that is now 100 weapon damage instead of being 75 weapon damage this is still a completely useless ability don't worry about it. But one of the good ones is that sniper training will now make you have an instant cast aim shot once you have five stacks of sniper training up. You can see I have a weak aura tracking this now. So with five stacks of sniper training up, my aim shot ability is going to be instant. Boom, now you can just instantly aim shot. If you move at all, you will lose those stacks, but you'll get those stacks back in a second, so don't worry. And then you can just do double aim shots. And they also doubled the duration of the Serpent Spread Rune, meaning that it will leave all targets with a 12 second Serpent Sting on it instead of a six second Serpent Sting from before. This is actually pretty nice on certain fights, but most of the time, if you can, you will be running sniper training. And they also buffed our main two abilities, Chimera Shot and Explosive Shot, both of these hit incredibly hard now. A Chimera Shot can absolutely truck targets. So you do want to hit with as many Chimera Shots as possible. It is still your priority over Aim Shot even with Instant Aim Shot for your Lock and Load procs. An Explosive Shot was also significantly buffed and it brings Range Hunters to being one of the strongest classes in the entire game for overall damage in a raid. You can just see all of this damage from Explosive Shot itself. So throughout a raid, having a second pair of gloves that you can swap swap to whenever you need to between Chimera Shot and Explosive Shot will be massive. Now there are two different playstyles for Ranged Hunter this phase and all of them will have the exact same specialization as you're seeing in the background but you can actually swap out one point in Improved Aspect of the Hawk for one more point in Improved Serpent Sting. This can be reliable for you but it is not necessary and you might want that higher chance of proccing Improved Aspect of the Hawk and where the variance comes is all in the Rune slot. Whether you're playing Heart of the Lion or Master Marksman and Focus Fire, or if you are playing the Lone Wolf build and then you will swap to TNT. This means you will not have to worry about your Focus Fire stacks, and it is also slightly higher DPS. But if you do have to bring the King's buff to your raid, you have to play Heart of the Lion, in which case you are playing Focus Fire. And the difference between the DPS and the two builds is very small, around 30 DPS for a two minute fight, which obviously gets a little bit more on a shorter fight. The priority for both specs is going to be to use your lock and load procs to cast double chimera shots, but the rotation changes because if you have a pet, you want to maintain focus fire. This is the rune that gives you 15% extra attack speed and your pet 30% extra attack speed as long as you have five stacks of it up. And it's worded weird. It says that your pet just builds these stacks by attacking the boss, but it actually only builds stacks by using an attack that spends focus. And so the only ability we want our pet to be casting during the fight is going to be Claw Rank 7. This is because it has no cooldown and it costs the least amount of focus, giving us the fastest stacks of focus fire. You can see right now, each time my pet uses his focus, we will gain another stack. And at five stacks, you will always consume those so that you now have focus fire on yourself for the next 20 seconds, giving you 15% attack speed. Your pet should reach five stacks again before you run out of focus fire. So you should be able to maintain this basically the entire fight. Bite. So here's the rotation for that build. You will always want to make sure Hunter's Mark is up on the boss before the fight starts. Then three seconds before the pull, you want to move for a second so that you lose those stacks and you can instantly cast an aim shot as the pull timer is coming down. At the same time, you want to send your pet in. You want to use your cooldown macro, which I'll get into in a minute, but you want to use your cooldown macro or any consumables because you want to snapshot your first Serpent Sting, which is going to be the first ability you use. 
So pre-cast aim shot, and if you don't have that chance, just open up with Serpent Sting. Then you will cast Immolation Trap to trigger Lock and Load, follow that by two Chimera Shots into an instant aim shot and then multi shot before hitting the Frost Trap for two more Chimera Shots. Within this rotation, usually after your first two Chimera Shots, you will have five stacks of Focus Fire, so make sure to consume those to get that up as soon as possible. Then if we change our runes to the Lone Wolf build, you no longer have to deal with sending your pet in or managing your focus fire stacks. That's essentially most of it. It kind of actually frees up a GCD within the rotation, but for the most part, the rotation is the same. So what we're going to do again is start the fight with your hunter's mark, then move three seconds before pulling to be able to precast an aim shot. Now it will be Serpent Sting, Fire Trap, Chimera, Chimera, Aim Shot, Multi Shot, Ice Trap, Chimera, Chimera, aim shot and this is your open gcd because we don't have another button to press yet and then fire trap and repeat and that's the rotation i highly suggest going down to the target dummies at the bottom of shimmering flats to be able to practice your rotation just get used to it and it will be very easy but if you're not used to it it can be a little bit complex as for pets their attack speed does not matter but you do always want a cat and you want it to always have claw rank 7. their attack speed only matters if your tank is using gift of of Arthas the consumable but it's within very very few DPS so it actually means pretty much nothing if you are using a pet make sure to do the sunken temple quest for the devil sword tooth this trinket just makes it so that your pet's next ability is a crit it's not very much damage but it's a little bit of extra damage because once you swap this trinket off after you use it it still maintains that effect so use it right now swap trinkets and you can look at my pet right here it still has primal instinct which means its next attack will be a crit instantly. This is nice for Beast Mastery Hunters because it makes them have flurry stacks instantly, but it's just a little extra damage. You can maintain Focus Fire before a pull if you get the stacks up before the pull and then swap to your main bracers that have a different rune on them. You actually will start the fight with 15% extra attack speed. Just make sure you dismiss your pet, of course, for Lone Wolf if you're playing that build. And you can get your best in slot arrows, the Dream Imbued arrows, outside of any Nightmare in Incursion. You just need to trade in some Mithril Gyro Shots to buy these one for one. And as for raid buffs, of course you want the Dark Moon Fair buff, the Sunken Temple buff, and the Songflower buff. But as for raid debuffs, you might be surprised to know that the most powerful debuff for you is going to be the Dream State or Storm Strike debuff. This makes the target take 20% extra nature damage. You absolutely want this in your raid, so you need a Boomkin or a Shaman, as well as the Fist debuff from the offhand Fist weapon. From there, the most important important ones to track are Homunculi, Curse of Recklessness, Fairy Fire, and Leader of the Pack. As for consumables, you always want an Elixir of Mongoose, and then you want the Ground Scorpok Assay. This is from the Blasted Lands. This is slightly more DPS and should be a lot more affordable than the Atollai Mojo of War, basically those flasks from the Sunken Temple Raid. Always put Lesser Wizard Oil on both of your weapons, get a Greater Arcane Elixir to buff your spell damage, and if you're min-maxing, you can also use an Elixir of Coalesce regret, which gives plus one to literally all of your stats. And of course, if you have a pet, make sure to put scrolls on your pet. And if you have enchanting or you are an alchemist, make sure to use the sigil or the potion. Ideally use the potion before your initial serpent sting because it will snapshot like I mentioned before. And for easy macros, if you don't want to leave your pet just standing next to you in the raid and you're not paying attention to sending them at all times, you can just use a slash pet attack macro on some of your attacks. Do not put this in your hunter's mark. You will end up pulling the boss early. Literally just don't do it. It's super amateur. Just put it in any of your shots and make sure you have at cursor macros for your traps. This will always send your traps wherever your cursor is. So you don't have to press the trap a second time. You can just put your cursor there and your traps will instantly be set. And the last real important macro you should have is just a cooldown macro tying in all of your cooldowns. So you can use these as you're about to burst. Just press it once. Ideally, if you have a consumable like extra speed, spell power, then you are going to be using this before that serpent sting right at the beginning of the fight and just start blasting. As for recours, you can see I have this hunter HUD here. You can just exclamation point WA in my Twitch chat to grab it. I can probably link that also in the description of the video, but this is just tracking everything. This week or showing my GCD is just to show you guys the rotation, but the week or that are tracking that I have instant casts of aim shot moving. The week or is tracking everything that matters to you as well are just all 
all within one HUD that basically shows you everything, right? If you don't have True Shot Aura, it'll tell you you need True Shot Aura. It'll also tell you what aspect you are in, so you'll know that you need to swap out of your aspect. You can just move all of these things around very easily, but this is all within one week or a HUD. And that should cover everything you need to know about Range Hunter in Season of Discovery Phase 3. If you have any questions, of course, make sure to come by the Twitch channel. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be doing a giveaway here on this video as well as pretty much every video coming up soon. And for this first video, I will be giving away the Blazing Epic Edition of Cataclysm or its equivalency in free game time. So if you want extra game time or want to win Cataclysm, just let me know what your favorite class is in in season of discovery in the comments. I know Cataclysm is obviously not the same thing as Sod, but if you want to win that or more time on Sod, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let me know in the comments what your favorite class is in season of discovery. I will be picking the winner in a few days. I'll probably do it live on stream from the comments and then I will DM you personally or reach out to you. So make sure you have the notification bell on on YouTube. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for the 100,000 subs and I will see you all on the next one.